this tank we've got Kamaka Rainbows with a uh, with some Iranian or Irian red rainbows. That's a Florida flagfish right there. And we've got Valisnarian here. It's kind of a 75 gallon tank. Used to be a show tank for a long time. Then it was plant overstock. Now it's just some rainbow fish. And we're going to go back to show tank that we're going to sell in and that type of thing. Uh, down low here, we've got some discus. We were ordering more in. We're down to the last four or so. We've got uh, a koi bed in there, as you can see. And then also bristlenose placostomus. You know, kind of kind of a bear tank at the moment. But, you know, that's that's the way it goes sometimes. In this tank here, we have another koi betta, quite a looker, with some cherry shrimp. It's been kind of hard to get cherry shrimp since the uh, whole set has been out due to the heat. And then we've got lots of pygmy corridoras. And this is just all in a little small 10 gallon with uh, some Apontigetan bovinianus for the plant. And then uh, assassin snails. Up above, We've got the Blue Angels. These things have been a good seller for us. They've been coming in with really nice fins lately. And uh, so, as you can see, looks super cool. Yeah, they're 15 bucks a piece, but they don't stick around long. Uh, this is some more Bovinianus growing out here. Down low, we also have Bovinianus, but we also have Pea Puffers. And, uh, you know, these have been getting a lot of press lately on the YouTube scene, if you will, and nano tanks. And, uh, you know, they're just... They're a good fish. We hide them down in the bottom so not everyone falls in love with them because not everyone's meant to own these. They can't necessarily go in your community tank. They do better uh, as a tank that's been set up for them. So that's how we sell them. In this tank here, we've got a Pontiquetan, Bo not Bovinianus, but Ulvaceus, so different leaf structure, and it's going to be a lot more swirled. And we've got the uh, Pseudomogul Pasci, or the neon red rainbow it's a dwarf rainbow only gets about two inches and then we've got the corridoris hastatus the rarest of the pygmy corys they will school midwater and we've mixed in some norman lamp by killifish as well kind of just a cool fun tank there's uh, some silver coolie loaches kind of way in the back there hiding under the plants kind of fun and uh, a few other odds and ends in there i can't see them right now but there might be uh, a red lizard catfish could be sold out as well in this tank, we've just got some baby goldfish, some baby uh, ranchus, black ranchus there, a couple rayukins, and and I don't know if we have any more. Looks like just yeah, fancies that are you know kind of common. We've got a bunch of albino Congo tetras here, and uh, these I saw in a store, fell in love with them, so now we're selling them. And then we have the red arc pencil fish, which these guys look super cool when they color up. You can see the males coming around, and then the females up here uh, are a much lighter color. But, you know, they're, the problem with those guys is they're expensive, about 12 bucks a piece, which I've seen them as high as 25 before, so I think our price is okay on them. Another little koi better right here, living with all the moss balls, and then a big kind of shoal of exclamation point rasboras, kind of a simple 10-gallon nano tank kind of displaying, like, you guys could do this. It would be really easy to our customers. Um, down low... We've got a lot of long fin white clouds. Now down here we also have Christmas moss. We have a decent portion right now, which that usually goes pretty quick. We also keep some nerite snails in there as well. And we've also got some breeding bristlenose in here. That's how we've got all the babies. The tank next door to it, we've got white clouds of the golden variety with another betta. All our bettas live in community tanks here at the store with a little bit of sprinkling of java moss. We run out all the time, and that's why we don't sell it online. It's one of our most requested things, but we can't keep enough even for our retail customers. Up here, we have a very in-demand plant. That is the Madagascar lace. We sell an insane amount of them online, and they're supposed to be really hard, but these are the West Africans, so they don't require CO2. Any kind of moderate light and fertilizer, they will grow and get all that leaf structure that everyone falls in love with. Great for shrimp. And then we've also got, you guessed it, another koi betta. Uh, and then we've got some loaches in here. These are the rosy loaches. And then we've got Brigitte rasboras. And supposedly, hidden away in here, there might be a green dragon bristlenose as well. Who knows, though? Up top, 
we've got some Amazon puffers. These two have already been sold. We brought in a group of, I think, 30 or so. I can't quite remember, but this is the last two. They've already been paid for. And then we've got this big pot of Java Fern right here. This is going to be the newest thing to go online once we get some pictures. And we've got more coming in real soon, but $16.99 for a nice big portion. You know, that's a pretty big pot. Uh, they've been selling well in store, and once they sell well in store, typically we'll introduce them online as well. In this tank, we've got normal um, Congo Tetras and some butterfly, African butterfly fish, and then more Madagascar lace. We keep roughly 30 to 40 of them on hand, and they sell in a few days, you know. So it's a good, good plant. People love it. They usually get one and then buy more. Down here, we have the all-important aquarium co-op sign, followed up with an absolutely gorgeous koi betta that blew in his tail and the side looks amazing. At least I think so. Uh, and all our bettas here we sell for $17.99, no matter what variety or anything like that. So it's kind of a level playing field. We have the pygmy spotted rasbora. That's the big school that you see in here. And a bunch of banana plants, as well as... Um, blue velvet shrimp which are eating on green beans and then in snucking or sneaking in the back there we've got some scarlet battis coming to check us out right now and then also there are some uh, blue wood shrimp but they've gone to the back to hide with a camera in their face and then last but not least in this tank I know nano tanks got a lot of stuff packed in here we have some dwarf anchor catfish hiding in the back down low to finish like this rack off basically we've got all the snails we sell well not all but uh, lots of nerites lots of mystery snails and dwarf african frogs so now let's make a trip to uh let's go see murphy let's go see murphy next all right here we have murphy and the mamboo puffer this is our 360 gallon tank it's four feet front to back six feet long murphy himself is about 14 to 16 inches at this point all live plants you can see and he eats clams so make sure you listen close maybe you'll get to hear his crunches uh, he lives with guppies no he doesn't eat them he just loves to eat clams and yes he can swallow a whole shell it also does come out the same way so he's kinda designed to do that in the tank in the background there you can see the super red bristle nose we've been growing out in this tank but yeah, just kind of a, a really cool pet, more like a dog. And the guppies are just in here to clean up after him. And we get 100 gallon water changes every day. He will bite my plants. You can see there's bite marks in them. And uh, that's just the cost of owning such a giant pet like this. And But he's super massive and wicked strong and super personable. I couldn't ask for a better pet, honestly. And he's also the store mascot. Everyone loves him, including me. So this tank is a 90 gallon cube. I got it at the Family Pet Expo, which is what the aquatic experience used to be called when it was in, it, in uh, Washington here. This is all dragonstone background with uh, uh, root wood or, you know, basically just wood coming down. And then we've got Anubias, real low light. This is where we sell our duckweed out of, and it's got, you know, we've got some pendant lights on it. It's not the best looking at the moment because of all the duckweed, but we sell so much duckweed, we had to put it somewhere, and this is where, this is the only tank in the store that's not automatic water change, and so we don't lose all our duckweed. We do have pothos and stuff growing out of the top, uh, but we breed a lot of bristlenose in here, not that we can catch them out. Uh, there's also some pea puffers. Uh, you can see one of the, the adult male bristlenose back in the rocks there. And then we've got, um, we've got, a sunset honey grommy right there as well kind of just a fun tank you know low light no co2 anything like that and uh something the employees just play around with got a lot of crypt parva we're going to want to carpet that out eventually and uh yeah it's kind of a mess because we go through so much duckweed it's unfortunate but we have nowhere else to put it so that's that's the way it's got to be so in this room this is where we have quarantine uh we had them all custom made they're all about the height they are hold about 11 gallons of water we have automatic water change uh, we can stock them really high i put as many as 300 tetras at a time you can see down here we have a lot of glow light tetras living in this one and in general uh we've got rams we've got normal german blue rams here these came from a local breeder these are from the wholesaler 
These are from the wholesaler. We've got some uh, platies that came in that aren't looking so hot. These are from a breeder, so that's why we quarantine. We've got guppies down here, and we've got some Brigitte Rasboras right here as well, kind of cool. But we've got a lot of open tanks. That's because, you know, about uh, six hours from now, about two o'clock in the morning, there's going to be a lot of fish coming in, and we're going to need to put them all away here so that they can be quarantined. We've got things like Cardinal Tetras down there as well, and we've got some fiddler crabs that we use as feeders. And uh, so yeah, I just like to show off that because I'm really proud that we have automatic water change system, quarantine room, and all that. A lot of stores don't have that, so I'm always proud to show that off. So here we've got kind of your basic average guppy. Uh, we do keep them on crushed corals, so that way the pH stays a little higher and the uh, hardness a little bit more. We add in things like Wonder Shell and that type of stuff, but we run a few tanks filled with guppies because we sell so many of them. Not gonna say a whole lot here because they're guppies and just assorted ones at that. Up top, we've got a few uh, silver tip tetras in big groups. They're super cool. They get orange when they're the males. And then we have uh, the brown tailed pencil fish, Nanostomus equus. Uh, you guys have seen me unbox those before. They're one of my favorite dither fish because they've got really small mouths. This is just a big old tank filled with monk tetras and uh, cheap fish, you know, really, really hardy. So great for beginners. We've got a lot of uh, Rasbora Hets in here, and we've got Bolivian Rams. We've got some Aspiodorus Corridoras. Well, technically not Corridoras, I know. Uh, and then we've got a Pinstripe Panak Pleco right behind the wood there. He's doing some munching. Down low, we've got some Cherry Shrimp hiding out in this guppy grass, and then we've got a few Japanese rice fish in here, uh, and a betta. In this tank, we've got the female powder blue gourami, one of my absolute favorites. I think every store should sell it. A lot of color, not super aggressive like the males, and uh, you know, a, a nice centerpiece fish for smaller tanks. Then we've got just kind of a myriad of uh, bronze quarries, so locally bred. Up top, we've got some fun stuff. We've got the pearl gouramis, one of my favorite kind of six inch centerpiece fish for a community tank. We've got the Kyathit Danios. They've got those orange fins on them. Super cool. You don't see those very often. And then we've got some of the purple Rasbora Hets in that tank. In this one, we've got basically all super red koi angels. Nice and red, high coverage. Uh, we sell a lot of them at $9.99. We've got a local breeder. You guys may or may not have seen that at this point. Um, but if not, you'll see it. You'll see who makes them for us. Uh, in here we've got the Kubodai Rasbora, also known as the Neon Green Rasbora. It's hard to find green in an aquarium, especially this true vibrant green. Uh, if they don't look quite green in the store, they're probably stressed out, so uh, give them a little bit of time. We've also got reticulated hillstream loaches. That's what's sucking on the glass here and down low. And then, you wouldn't see it unless I pointed it out, but we have the dwarf horse face loach. They're good at hiding in sand and blending in. Over in this tank, we've got German Blue Rams, some more of those ones that were locally bred that we saw in quarantine. We also have Cardinal Tetras, and we have a Gold Nugget Pleco in the back there, which is showing me more than the Pleco itself, but as you saw, we had a ton of Glowlight Tetras in quarantine, uh, so we have a ton out on the floor, and then we also have a black, well, quote-unquote black Crown Tail Betta, or a black Orchid, whatever you want to call it, just kind of a fun, fun betta. Over here, we have the Rasbora uh, SBI, or the Pork Chop Rasbora, so they stay smaller. We've got uh, Epistogramma Orange Flash. We've got Orange Laser Corridoras. And we have some baby Blue Phantom L128s, eating on those green beans back there. And there's more Orange Lasers. Looks like we're holding one of the Orange Flash for someone. Down here, this is a fish I don't carry that often, but they look so good that I wanted them. And these are the albino paradise fish. Kind of a fun one to breed outside. It's getting to be cold out now, so I wouldn't put them out now. But they are a great fish. like them quite a bit. I might take a couple pairs home to breed. Haven't decided yet. And then we've got uh, dojo loaches as well. Just kind of a fun, cool water, don't have to heat tank. Over here, we've got uh, leopard danios, an unsung hero in the hobby. Very cheap. Nice fish. 
Uh, and then we've got Golden Dojos and Long Fin Bristlenose Plecos. Up here we've got some kind of oddball fish. We've got the green fire tetras, which aren't very common. Uh, we've got the whiptail cats. We've got the L092 sp head spotted pleco. We've got some styrbicores, those are common. Uh, and then we've got some sunset honey garamis, which are common as well. Over here, we have kind of a cool mix of fish. First of all, we've got the chocolate garamis, super fun. Real timid, kind of hard to get to eat, but very cool fish. We've got the Episto Super Reds. And then we've got the Flagtail Rummy Nose, also known as the Peruvian Rummy Nose. Their, s their stripes are a lot more prominent on the Tetra itself and uh, kind of just a fun one. So not something you see every day. Over here, we have Neon Dwarf Rainbows. We have some... Uh, what, pink flamingo guppies or flamingo guppy? We sell them as a pair, 1899. We've got a koi bed in with them. Yes, bettas with guppies. We do it all the time. We don't have problems, but, you know, we could always have to move them. We also have Epistogramma agazizii double reds. We also have panda coris. And then there's a king tiger way in the back there where you can't really see it. But believe me, it's in there. And we also have lipstick gobies. Let me show you some of those. There's one right there. And they stick on the glass as well. So you've got one like right here on the side. You've got one in the back. You know, oh, and one right here. So they're all over the place. In this tank, we've got your basic assorted angel. Lots of lemon tetras. We've got the epistogramma uh, fire red. So the epistogramma agazizii fire reds. Different variant than we just saw. And that's pretty much it in this tank. A lot of cherry barbs up in this tank mixed with the emerald eye rasbora, one of the tightest schooling fish if you get those. Really cool. Over in this tank, we've got some fun ones. We have uh, basically Coidora axelrodi, which are those guys right there. Ember tetras, super nice nano red fish. You can see how red that guy is. Then we also have uh, dwarf chain loaches in here. And it says, oh yeah, there's a checkerboard cichlid. Kind of a fun one we don't have in too often. And these are the red delta guppy pairs. We've got another tank of assorted guppies right here. Not going to spend too much time on them. Up top we have the uh, Odessa barbs, which are a fun one. Really nice and colorful. In this tank, not going to spend too much time, but we do have a lot of coolie loaches. But then we've got something I think is fun. And that would be, if I can get, it, yeah, right here, we've got all these Betta Pugnacks. You know, he's hiding right behind the, the the label there. Down low, we've got Clown Loaches mixed with Crebenzis Teniatus Naite pair. So usually that's kind of the yellow-bellied one. Uh, those are wild caught. Next to that, we've got a bunch of sword tails, an assortment, mixed with another Koi Betta. Over here, we've got some goldfish, just some little babies, and the porthole catfish, one of my favorites. The haplocats, they're real nice, and uh, they remind me of giant autosynclus, really. Over here, we've got green tiger barbs. You know, we've been selling more tiger barbs since people have seen the 800 gallon that we have filled with tiger barbs. We've got a lot of bronze corridoras, so we've got them at the cheap. And, uh,. Yeah, that's what's going on in that tank. Over here we have Irian Red Rainbows and a Turquoise Rainbow and lots of Long Fin Bristlenose. In this tank, it's a 33 long, so it's like a 55 but shorter. We've got a lot of Brigitte Rasboras. You can see that school there. This is kind of just an aquascape tank that Kaylee has going on at the store. We've also got Cherry Shrimp in here. And a Mono Shrimp as well. And kind of a collection of plants. I've gone over them in previous videos and stuff like that, but it's just a nice display to show people what they could do with nano fish. Yeah, it's not quite a nano tank, it's 33 long, but if you were to cut this in half, you have, you know, a two foot long tank, that's kind of a nano. Uh, up here we just have an assortment of roseline sharks and some val and plant overstocks we usually keep up there. In this tank we've got a few predators, it used to be plant overstock, but we've expanded to the new warehouse, we've got a little more space. We've got the rocket gars. And then we've got a Bicher right here. 
Big DI for 1999. Customer brought it in. It was eating his fish. No wonder. Up here, we've got just kind of a Cardinal Tetra display tank. Right now, we're at the nighttime lighting. Lights have already gone out pretty much. Uh, but easy to do. Dwarf Sagittaria. Ton of uh, Cardinals. Always looks good. Real easy. Got some Amano Shrimp working on some algae. So over here, we have the plant sales tanks that are in the store. Uh, I'm glad that we finally have it so that we can pull plants from the warehouse instead of the store because we ended up just looking like this all the time. But you can see we've got lots of kind of Anubias backstock. We've got lots of Crispus backstock. You can see over here we've got lots of baby tears. These are just normal baby tears and they're purling quite a bit. Things like Val and Water Sprite and Crips and Java Fern, uh, Tiger Lotus, all that kind of stuff. We've got a lot of plants that we offer and uh, you know we have more coming in tomorrow we get about two to three shipments a week to keep up with the demand and uh, you know so try our plants out if you haven't some of the first look at the new warehouse we've got a sump connected to a whole row of tanks we've got another row of tanks to put in and obviously I've got lots of plants to sell uh, we've got them packed in here pretty tight and this is after the weekend we've got more arriving tomorrow and we can kind of just do this pan the lights are off at the moment no co2 is being injected but you can imagine this whole